So basically, what I wrote down right was R. This is playing devil's advocate. This is not my perspective. Mm-hmm. This is just what I was thinking about when I was writing this. Right. Okay. So I wrote, "What are black people doing currently mo- in modern times to stop or prevent or slow racism? Is it enough? Do um, does it not work because of the system? Like if." I said, why can't we change the system? Why can't – if enough people say this is not okay, then everybody – everybody – force everybody to change mm-hmm. like we did with um, the 13th Amendment. Force everybody – force the economic turmoil that happened mm-hmm. with the, the results of the Civil War. I said, if every black person stood up from their seats mm-hmm. and, dema- and stormed Washington and demanded laws um, that – that changed um, the way police like punishments uh, were are put in for say um, mistreating mistreating um, African American citizens. Mm-hmm. Um, if would there be change, or would there be pushback? Can I respond to that? Yes. Okay. So I think that what you said about the 13th amendment and how like kind of sharecropping and the Jim Crow era and stuff like that continued after, I think that speaks volumes to the inherent tendencies of human beings. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Um, (laughs) um, To kind of have these views ingrained inside of them. Yeah. And so I feel like... So it's a generational thing. mm Mm-hmm. And the problem is, is that when you say like all the black people coming up and demanding change at Washington, mm-hmm. like like they could demand all the legislation changes they want, but that's not going to change the mindset of who of what people think of them. Yep. And I feel like that's a problem, and it's a hard solution because what are you going to do? Like no matter. What the civil rights era that changed a lot of stuff, right? But like mm-hmm. people still kind of in the south are. Still but it was kind of a forceful, a forceful change, right? Absolutely. And people, people hated it. Absolutely. People thought it was the worst crime of in America uh-huh. that these people were demanding that this they forced their they're changing their their own uh-huh. their minds. Mm-hmm. They're like, you can't make me do that. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing. Same thing with the with the gun laws, man. Mm-hmm. You can't force me to not have guns. Mm-hmm. I'll do what I want can't force me to like black people i'll do what i want but i think that it's a good point when you force legislation is that now that these changes have been implemented like schools have been integrated so how do we force progression or sorry you go uh, so i feel like oh my goodness it took a long time for people to be more accepting of blacks and or just minorities in general Mm -hmm. um but i feel like part of the problem is the culture the culture and i I keep on going back to culture for some reason, but I feel like... Because culture is everything, man. That's all we got. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but anyways, I feel like there's a huge stigma around, like, black people or African-American people tend to be naturally violent. And obviously, that's not true at all. But, like, that's a stigma in our society that people think. And it doesn't help that so many black people are impoverished, are in gangs and stuff like that. And I feel like we need to do something as a society to lift black people out of that culture, out of that. How? It's hard, though, because, like, you can't just throw money at it and say, oh, okay, yeah, you're right. Social welfare programs, here's some money, get a job. It's like you have to fix the mindset. And mm-hmm. you have to fix the mindset of white people. You have to fix the mindset of black people. Yeah. Like, you just have because, to. Yeah. You have to create a society that's more welcome to diversity yeah. mm-hmm. and like, but at the same time, you have to create a society in which, mm-hmm. so, I, I don't, so get this, do you think the way we do that is by reforming the education system, by implementing policies that say, that mandate that, that the education system be more balanced, that you have to. That you, but the, this goes back to force because they're forcibly getting this. This mm-hmm. is this would be mandated by the federal government mm-hmm. that you have to have, go through as a child these these um, 
these non-discriminatory classes where you learn to to not discriminate against anyone. Little, do you think that that would solve anything? I'm a little confused on what you mean by that. Uh, what do you what do you like? How what are non-discriminatory classes? Oh yes, yes, yes. So, just like more balanced, you know. You know how um school all we do is like read and write and math and stuff. Uh huh. So. That's not what all life is, right? Uh huh. And if you're not exposed to the rest of um of the other aspects of life, then you just you live your life perfectly normally, and you're just not exposed to these other aspects. Uh-huh. So my point basically is that if we force, and the force is a strong word, but it's pretty much gonna like I feel like the only way to force change is through force. Because we can't coax change. Mm-hmm. Because if you coax change, it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Because of, I guess, back to the culture, right? So if we, as a people, say, hey, southern people, we are forcing you. Mm-hmm. But they'll, they'll say, they'll phrase it light, lighter, you know. It, it's, all, it's all mind games. But they say, hey, white people, um, we are going to have your children... Participate in activities in which um, they are taught that race means nothing. That physical form is just an illusion and a social concept. Mm -hmm. And that anything your parents have told you is uh, false. Mm -hmm. It is at the government's place to do that. To cause, to, to get the ball rolling on change. Well... I think that, honestly, I don't think that would help. Like, I feel like our, well, in our education system here, like, we're already taught that, like, Mm -hmm. are we? In California? Are we? I think so. Are we? I think our, we've been pretty non, oh, I think my mom's here. Yeah. I think we've been pretty non-biased in the way we teach our children. Um, we teach welcoming. We we teach that, but that's a culture thing. It's different. You don't. You think that um, in different areas they teach them different things. Uh-huh. Take a little pause. Take a little pause. Walking around. So. So. Are we taught that though? Are we taught that from, from school, or are we taught that from our parents? Um, well, I don't think it's this, or our education, whoever, our teachers' jobs to teach us, mm-hmm. like, kind of, like, to be non-discriminatory. I feel like, at least in the basic primary education, race doesn't really come up, and I feel like... Right. So should it? No, I don't think so. Okay. Because I feel like if you bring up race, there's obviously going to be inherent tendencies that people have. And that's going to lead to obviously some bias biases. Mm-hmm. So I feel like if you exclude race from the discussion in education, at least in primary education, like mm-hmm. elementary school stuff. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> elementary school stuff like that. It kind of teaches kids to get in that mindset that maybe there is no real big significant differences between the races and that Mm -hmm. we're all just one human race. I know that's cliche, but at the same time, I feel like I feel like it's our parents jobs to kind of set that mindset where we're all equal and like Mm -hmm. there's no significant differences. So should the should, should the government leave it on the parents to trust the parents to do that or should they take some affirmative action? No, I don't think they should. I feel like... um, I feel like what I said before, like how you're excluding race altogether. Yeah. I feel like that's a more effective means of combating the problem. And I feel like you're always going to have families Mm -hmm. where they're going to be, like, inherently racist and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because of culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I feel like... How they're brought up. Even if you implement that in our education, mm-hmm. like you're not going to change that. that. It won't. It won't. It, it won't affect them deep enough uh-huh. to to change their core values. Yeah, I I feel that. Uh-huh. I agree. 
Alrighty, so we're gonna switch gears now. Um, I, I was I was thinking a lot about slavery last night. It was tripping me out. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're gonna switch it from from race to a little thing we like to call capital punishment. Oh, okay. What do you think about our justice system, huh? What's up with that? Uh, specifically the death penalty? Sure, yeah. Okay. I will say that I do not believe in the death penalty. Okay. And I have always seen life as, like, the most important thing. Life is the most important thing. And I feel like taking that away from someone, Mm -hmm. no matter what you do... I agree. Like, I've just... There's something, like... I don't... I can't even put an argument around it. It's just something that's inside of me where I... I like, get that, man. I it's get just that. wrong. Uh-huh. And I feel like it's an even worse punishment in a sense to have that person live out their life knowing that they did what they did. So that they can reflect on it and yeah. try to just change and live the rest of their life. Yeah. Knowing that the, the, of the errors of their ways. Yeah. Instead of just being dead and being done with. Mm-hmm. I feel like... I agree. I feel like that's a better thing because, like, you have a chance for that person to reflect yep. and maybe change their mindset. And I think no one person should get to make the decision on another individual's life. No, absolutely. Um, Nobody. And if they don't, like, learn their lesson, then they'll die of old age. So, so be just, it. Yeah, whatever. They'll, yep. So I had a long debate about this in my social justice class uh-huh. about... Um, listening to different people's perspectives on it uh-huh. and it's very interesting so what I, what I had come to terms with listening mm-hmm. right just just taking in all these these different people which was very interesting in a social justice class when this debate brought, got brought up it, a lot of tensions were flaring bro. Uh-huh. a lot of tensions it was very split she was like go on this side if you think this and it, go on this side if you think that, if you think uh, it should never be a thing I can imagine. And, and it was very very split so I I stood on the uh on the side of, I did. I was not on the side of that it should never be a thing, uh-huh. because uh, I just I was I would I had to, I had to have I hadn't gotten a chance to think about it yet. I was like, uh-huh. shit, because a lot of the times when you're not thinking about it, it's not really an issue in your in your brain, you know. For sure. But when you get when you're given this moral question, it's it's a hard thing to think about. Yeah. It's a really hard thing to think about. So what it came down to was peace of mind, okay. where a case like Ted Bundy. Uh-huh. Where you have this human being, and you have him alive still, uh-huh. that that aggravates people due to he, their own human nature and their own upbringings. That this person being alive, even though I never have to talk to them, upsets them. I don't see why that's an issue, though. Like, who cares? To some people, it is. Okay, but is that going to change anything? What? Regardless of if he's dead or alive, he's still in prison. He's still yep. going to rot yep, yep, yep. the rest of his life out. Uh-huh. Some people think that's not enough. Some people think that is not enough. I need justice. Well, I don't think that's justice. I, f- I, I don't f- either. I feel like... I think that's a, a one-step solution to a multi-step problem. Yeah, and I feel or, like it's very impulsive as well. They're just uh-huh. acting on totally. emotion. Yeah. And they're not the thing, seeing man. the bigger picture. It's all about emotion. That's yeah. what it came down to. When I was sure. listening to these people, it's a lot of emotional emotional context. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of these people don't understand the emotion of the emotions that, that goes through this and uh, of of the 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 fiery intensity that's in these in these uh mm-hmm. in these cases in which the death penalty is considered. Mm-hmm. They just they just haven't been faced with that issue yet, you know? Mm-hmm. And and I think that it it sh- is I was like I but going into that debate, I was like, you know what? I think that if the person really like if they have just been this horrible awful serial murderer, killed like tens of people, that you know what? Like just just be done with it. Just, just, this person is too far gone. Uh They're beyond, they're beyond help. Just, 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 just be done. And then when you think about what life is and the meaning of it, 
that's just not something that one person can decide. Mm-hmm. Or no, much less one person, much even a, a, the Supreme Court, man. Yep. They can't even decide this. I think that the highest thing that the government can be able to do is put you in jail. And that's it. Sure. There shouldn't be any torture. There shouldn't be any blah, blah, blah. It should just be prison. And that's it. And I feel like that's a justifiable punishment. I feel like being able to sit with your thoughts yep. and think of what you've done is totally. for the rest of your life, mm-hmm. no less, yeah. is something that's just going to like affect you and drag you down. And no matter how horrible of a human mm-hmm. being you are, that's literally all you can think about because prison is just... It's prison. There's it's nothing. just... It's, it's just... Oh, dude, prison trips me out, bro. Prison trips me the fuck out, dude. My friend, my dad's, like, best friend, he uh-huh. went to jail for 15 years off of a, um, a charge of, um, uh, attempted murder. Mm-hmm. But basically, what the, the situation was, one instance, one instance that this happened, road rage, goes off of the road, uh, he gets mad, cuts off some, someone cuts him off, mm-hmm. honks, they get off the intersection, uh, they they go to the, an alley. Uh-huh. Uh, these guys are cornering his car in the alley, and he has a gun on him because he is in training to become a police officer. Mm. He takes a couple warning shots at the, at to, in their direction, mm-hmm. and the only evidence that they need is that they have a bullet hole in the uh, one of the seats of their car, and. Boom, boom, boom. He can't fight it because if he fought it, he would most likely lose and get up to 30 years. And then, uh, so he just took, took, a, plea took a plea deal, got 15. That sucks. How fucking crazy is that? That that is like a thing that just happens like constantly. Yeah. That that's constantly a thing that can happen. And, and just one instance and then boom. And he, like, Sui, I'm telling you, this is a person that is... He had sent sent me birthday cards every mm-hmm. year from jail. That's tough. Uh, every single year, without fail, gave me twenty five bucks. Working off of, get this, I was reading some of his letters. Mm-hmm. Thirteen cents an hour. That's what you make in jail. It's horrible. It's slavery. That's what it is. It's slavery, and the fact that it's just it just trips me out, man. That you can just go to this place, and just n- never come out. Life sentences are a fucking trip, man. Would you rather go to life in jail or just die? I'd rather die. Rather die? Honestly, yeah, I'd probably rather die. It's a, it's a tricky thing to answer because we're not faced with that actual question. Yeah. We're just faced with it in theory. Yep. So we know we don't actually have to face these these consequences, but this is a this is a reality uh-huh. for many many people. And it's a trip. It's a trip, man. Sure. Trips me out. Hmm. All right. Um. Got about ten minutes left here before I gotta go to a sport. So I'm gonna just pick one thing that you think you can finish this out with. Uh. Oh, I like this one. All right, I'll, I'm gonna talk about my slavery theory. Um, so, slavery was a, a moral issue, right? Uh-huh. It was a moral issue. Was, people were caught up with their morals. They sure. were like, "Hey, we can't own other humans. That's not right." Uh-huh. But then other people were like, "But then how the fuck are we gonna make that paper? Sure. How the fuck are we gonna sell our clothes to England? Huh? Uh huh." <laughs> They're like, this is ridiculous. You can't tell us not to own slaves. Uh-huh. Like, what? They're, they're, they're lesser than us. We can own them if we want to. So, England abolished slavery uh, much way before us, correct? I believe so. A couple, 20, 30 years before? Yeah. So, their morals had changed. They were like, okay, guys, come on. As a country, we can decide. This is not okay. We got to stop this. Mm-hmm. So, if... Uh, so that was that was progress. That that was that was something that, that took time, and that human beings collectively said, "Okay, we need to stop this. 
of these other countries, they can stop this if they want to. But you know what? We, as a whole, as a body of people in this area, we're going to stop this because this is not right. Uh-huh. So if, if one, if like the first people that abolished slavery just were like, you know what? I think we're going to keep it. This is doing pretty damn good for our economy. Like, man, we making a, we're making we kind of thriving. These other countries, they kind of look up to us because we got all this money now. Uh-huh. So why would we stop it? So it goes back to the fact that would – this is the question. Would – if white people had just – just like in their brain just as a whole, their morals had not changed – that slavery would just still be a thing today. And that if it was just passed down generation to generation, that we'd still be just owning slaves and it would be, like, normal. Like, if the whole world didn't say that this is bad, that if, in general, we were just like, you know what, this is, uh, this is pretty cool. I'm, I'm digging this. I think that if you're speaking, like, specifically, like, people thought slavery, like, with African Americans... Mm-hmm. that itself was okay I feel like no it wouldn't have still been a thing because it wouldn't have still been a thing I feel like no you matter think, if you it's you think they would have rose up done something about it no, no. I, I don't think so I okay. cause like all you see all the rebellions in history yep didn't the, really work the result of them are just stricter laws stricter punishments mm-hmm. stuff like that but I feel like no matter if you think slavery is a bad thing, any human has the morals mm-hmm. to see what human rights are. Yeah, okay. And, like, if you... Even if you don't think slavery itself is bad, mm-hmm. you know that people... Are people. Uh, I don't know. I don't even know what I'm saying. I feel like... It's all good. Just think about it. Like... Like, you... Like... Even if you're born with twisted values, with different priorities, that yeah, I feel you, by nature, by being a human and seeing what your own rights are, that all other humans should get these rights. Yeah, I think so. I think that... You think that that would have... That just... Just by... Na- just by nature that this just this had this was inevitable i think that there's like something in our subconscious Mm -hmm. that like tells us what's right and what's wrong yep yep, 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 yep. and we have that whole our whole moral system is based off of that and even if you grew up seeing that oh slavery is fine and most people they would grow up in that system and still think it's okay there would still be some people that would say wait what are we doing here this is completely unacceptable yep and like even if you're grown up in that culture there's still going to be some people who are have the mental capacity to see past their society's values and see what's yeah. morally right so there's always going to be outliers in progressive thinking and i feel like and that's what's gonna you can change. like say like benjamin franklin was one of those examples yep. where he kind of saw the connection between like African Americans being enslaved here and the colonies being enslaved by the British and yeah that dude totally. that dude was a smart dude he was a very smart dude so I feel like oh my if God. you have that mental capacity to see past that and I believe that we all do but not everyone gets there we all as humans have a set of morals which we know what is right and what is wrong and yeah. I feel like the sooner we realize that the better people will be yeah I think that if you get yourself a French prostitute constantly then you'll damn well have some better morals on what the world can bring you what? (laughs) Benjamin Franklin bro I've never heard of that he had hella French prostitutes okay I think that that really uh, put his 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 own perspective uh, or his own beliefs in perspective when he's like Bro, why don't we just give everybody French prostitutes and we can all get along? Oh my god. Don't make sense. Alright, whatever you say. Have you read his quotes? 
some of them. Oh my god, he's got some good quotes. He has one that says, Beer is proof that God cares about humanity. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Oh it's a real god. thing. We talked about it in Bristol the other day. He, we were talking about Ben Frank, and then he was like, he was... He, he had, like, a couple of his quotes up there. And then he was like, he's got some more that are, like, funny. I just can't remember them. And I, I pull up on the screen because I'm the TA. I control the world. I pull up Benjamin Franklin quotes. <laughs> and we just started reading them. Oh, <laughs> he's God. such a funny guy, bro. He's such a funny guy. Well, thank you very much for coming on. For sure. It's been a, it's been a wild ride. Uh-huh. I'm going to clip this this stuff together. I'm gonna see how it works. Uh-huh. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm getting. I'm. I'm getting. I'm learning. Uh-huh. Getting the hang of this. For sure. I would love to have you on again. For sure. I, I have a lot, as you can see. There's a lot of stuff we didn't get to. You said that this was episode two. Who was your first one? Connor Allen. For sure. Hell yeah, bro. Attic antics. Closing out. Peace. Peace.